Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Google uh, Hangout with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Uh, my name is Joe Grabowski. I'll be your host for today. Um, thank you for joining us uh, on this awesome day of celebrating amazing women in science, uh, adventure, and exploration. Um, we have an awesome group uh, joining us for our Hangout today. I'm so excited to introduce um, Marcela uh, Uliano Silva. She's joining us in Brazil today. And just to tell you a little bit about her, she's a Brazilian computational biologist. So she studies the biology of organisms using computer programs. So right now she's looking at the DNA of aggressive invasive species. So species that don't belong somewhere, maybe we brought them in by accident and they're taking over ecosystems and pushing, um, people. There's always people except pushing people out of the way or other creatures that belong there. So the golden mussel is one that she's looking at that came to South America in ballast tanks of ships and I know she's got lots to share with us today. She can share a little bit of that story with us. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Marcella, we're really excited to, uh, to learn a little bit about your research, what you study, um, and maybe a little Mr. bit Grabowski, about how you got into it. The main office, Mr. Grabowski. Thank you so much, Joe. Oh, thank you so go. much for the invitation. <laughs> to be here and I'm very glad I can really show you and share with you a little bit about what I do. Um, so yeah, so right, I'm going to get a PhD in two weeks time. So the genome of the golden muscle is ready now. So basically what we do here in Brazil is we do this in a lot of other different parts of the world. But I mean, my PhD thesis is to sequence the golden muscle genome, which is this very aggressive invasive species. Uh, thank you so much for joining. I will show you a video. Unfortunately, we don't have the sound of the video, but I can, I can explain the video. It's an animation, which is really cool. So I, I can explain you a little bit uh, why the video is running. So I will just share my screen with you now. Uh, so I live in Brazil, so I am a native Portuguese speaker. So I'm really sorry if sometimes my English is broken. Please. Uh, don't mind it. I, I, I do my best. Um, are you guys seeing my screen? Yes, can you see it? Can you like... I can see it. You just have to pull up the YouTube video now, Marcella. Okay, that's nice. Okay. All right, there it is. Perfect. So here we go, guys. This is me as a cartoon. So we have done a crowdfunding to fund uh, my PhD project because of the issue with the Amazon. So this muscle. So this is the golden muscle. Uh, usually, muscles you can eat and they, they are very delicious. But you know, this one that I work with is very tiny and we cannot eat. And it's an invasive species uh, that came from Asia. So we came from uh, China in ballast water of ships, as Joe mentioned. And, uh, and then now it's spread in a lot of important rivers in South America. So from the south of South America to the wetlands uh, in Pantanal. So it's really widespread, a lot of trouble. And this research is part of a bigger project to avoid it to get to the Amazon. So we don't want this to get to the Amazonian waters. Uh, basically, these muscles, they reproduce a lot in South America. And uh, they can get to the, from densities of five muscles per meter square to 100,000 square. And these very high dense populations, they cause a lot of problems. So they clog pipelines of power plants and they cause also a lot of ecological issues. So they are like a new food resource for the fishes and the shelves of, their, of other native bivalve. Uh, threatening these species and really decreasing the biodiversity of these rivers because this muscle really takes over once it's introduced. So here we say that it, in South America it only does three things, which is mate, and then it filters the water, then it's like the food resource for the fishes and it's causing all these ecological problems. And that's why we really don't want this to get to the Amazon, you know, because the Amazon is already threatened by so many other pressures, uh, and then we, it is an invasive species there too. 
So that's why we are studying the DNA of this species. So we can understand uh, how, how this, this species is able to come from China to South America, inhabit a lot of waters with a very different characteristics, still survive a lot. And, um, and also, so we want to use some biotechnology so we can target only the invasive population and to prevent it from harming um, native species in these fresh waters. So just to show you, I speak from here. I don't know if you guys know this place. This is Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So I'm not from here, but I live here now uh, at the University, the Federal University of Rio, where I do my PhD and study the genome of this species. Uh, a few pictures to show you um, from the video you just saw. So this is like an image of the Rio Golden Mussels. So you can see they're really tiny, but they create this very huge population. Uh, uh, illustrations of how they like um, inhabit these grids and they, you know, colonize everything and it's really hard to get them out of there. So they clog pipelines of power plants the ecological impact that we mentioned. So it's this food resource for the fish population. Here we see a detail of the intestines of the fish that ate golden mussels and end up dying because of that. Um, so, uh, so this is a little bit about how I do my research. So this is my dad, he's my driver. So uh, the place where I collect golden mussels The place where I collect all the mussels is really far away from Rio de Janeiro, so I, it's close to my hometown. So I go there, and then my dad drives me to uh, collect the species. I'm sorry, to collect the golden mussel. So this is me close to a river, collecting uh, a few golden mussels so we can extract the DNA. So this is back in the lab. Then we extract the DNA, and then we sequence the DNA in these very big machines. And we got to get something like this. So that's why I'm a computational biologist, because as soon as we sequence the DNA, we have the four letters of the genome, right? And then I have to make sense of these letters. So the golden muscle genome has, has 1.6 billion letters that I need to organize. In comparison, for, for example, with the human genome, the human genome has 3 billion, and the golden muscle has 1.6 billion letters. This is me. Ooh, sorry, actually, this is me. <laughs> so this is like my everyday life. So unfortunately, I'm not in the jungle every time, you know, or uh, I try to protect it sitting on my computer, even though I like to, to go there from time to time. But I live in the city and work in a computer. And, and in a very, very nutshell, genomics is something like this. So we can say that this image is a genome of a species, right? So every species has the same kind of letters in their genomes. We all come from the same ancestors. What changes is the number of letters and the organization of these letters between, between species. This is kind of the golden muscle genome, this image. So the genome tells the story, which has like a tree, a blue sky, and this uh, plane flying there. And what I have is this like very small pieces because we sequence DNA in very small uh, pieces of letters and then I have to make sense and you know build this jigsaw. The only thing is that I don't have the image prior to the assembly, right, of this, all these puzzles. So uh, I need to get all these small pieces and assemble it and so I can have something similar to this image at the end, which is the thing that I have and I'm defending as a PhD at this moment. And we do that using uh, very powerful computer clusters. So here is just uh, a comparison. So you have your like normal computer. And a computer cluster is nothing more than a lot of computers uh, connected among themselves. So uh, have a bigger power and they can, you know, compute all these letters to organize it in the, in the right way of the genome. And then we end up having the DNA of the golden muscle. Um, so this field, uh, like studying the genome of a species that we want to prevent it from harming other species, or also studying the genome of threatened species is what I call conservation genomics. So this is 
basically what I do. So I do conservation genomics. I build genomes of species of interest for conservation. Fighting invasive species or protecting threatened species. So the other species that I'm about to start studying too are these lost species. So these very, very cute animals. Picture. So they are like our kangaroo, like kangaroos are for Australia. These lost species are our kangaroos in South and Central America. So they are very different from kangaroos, of course. But they are, what I mean is that they are endemic from the forests of South and Central America. And we want to study their genomes also to prevent them, to, to preserve them. So uh, here I have like just a final picture of uh, me. This is the Atlantic forest. So I have never been to the Amazon and forest. Uh, unfortunately, it's too far from me. But I have been in the Atlantic forest. Actually, we live in the, uh, in the Atlantic forest. So the cities in South America, they were built in, in the Atlantic forest. So this is why it's very threatened. So we have like only 10% left of the Atlantic forest. But as you can see, it's marvelous. It's really beautiful. And, you know, I studied the golden mussel so we can prevent these waters from, from, from getting invasive species into it. And here you see the forest where they lost live on the trees, which is really, really wonderful too. I guess it's, it, that's it, you know, very, like, very briefly. And I would be very happy to take questions from you for listening. All right. Well, Marcella, thank you so much for sharing your work with us. I know that dealing with something like the golden mussel is not easy because we have zebra mussels in, um, in our Great Lakes and they are a huge issue. And um, so I can just imagine what it's like trying to prevent their spread and, and combat them from the places they've already gotten to. So thank you so much for sharing your work with us today. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, and it's like, like something also, it's research against the clock, right? Because they can invade Amazon any minute, and we just don't want this to happen. So we are trying to get this genome as quick as possible. All right, well, let's meet a classroom. We have Mrs. Wilson's class. Your microphone's on. They're joining us from Farmington. They're a grade eight classroom. Uh, go ahead if you have a question for um, our guest today. Okay, we do have a question. Um, we were wanting to know, so how, once you have the DNA, um, then what do you use that for? Do you, are you like trying to, what are you trying to do to the muscles? Well, um, we are trying to create, um, yeah, I mean, the thing is like, we are trying to create a transgenic muscle that is going to pass a character of infertility to the next, next population of muscles. Okay. And we are not going to create a muscle that is going to uh, prevail forever because the, the character is passing its infertility. But then we just like mate them with the wild population for like one, uh, one time and then it decreases the populations of uh, muscles in that invaded area. And then we can do this from time to time when we need it. So we have done this also with uh, mosquitoes which in South America transmits the dengue fever. We have, like, scientists have created a transgenic, mus a transgenic mosquito that also reproduces with the native mosquitoes, and then they prevent the native mosquitoes from passing the disease um, to, to, to the human population. So the idea is to do that. We already have uh, the technology. We have a technology called CRISPR that can help us. Of course, this is going to take years because we, we have to take really care that these muscles are safe, and then we are going to test them in the lab for many, many generations first. The idea is basically try to do that. All right, let's meet our next classroom. Uh, Mrs. Webb's joining us from Harrison, Virginia. They're a grade eight group. Um, let me turn your microphone on. There you go. Okay. Hi. I'm with you today. Um, Addison has a question. Um, when, you were, when, you, when you were talking about when, how you organize the work, what, what specifically are you organizing and how, like, how do you organize it? The you mean the genes? So, yeah. 
So yeah, so the DNA, the DNA is just like a lot of letters in sequence, right? A C T G A C T G A A A. But inside these letters, we have some patterns. So as I told you, like that, we all share the same DNA. We have these patterns studied in other species already, which are the genes. And our genes are very, very similar between bacteria, between golden mussels, between humans. Kind of like align these other genomes of other species to my genome, and by similarity, I can find the regions of genes. So this is basically what I do. All right. Our next class is joining us from Freehold, New Jersey. They're on a shortened day today. They're grade sevens because of the large amount of snow that they, they had over the last uh, few hours, so yesterday and into the evening. So I'm glad you guys could make it. Um, do you have a question for Martella? So we just switched classes, and they are just reading the bio on Marcella. Does anyone have a question? It's a brand new group, so they missed the presentation with our schedule change of the snow. Okay, so why don't you guys take a look at the bio, then I'll swing back. Thank you. All right. So we were able to have Mrs. West's group join us. You'll just have to tell me um, where you're joining us from today. Um, you're able to fill a spot. We're in Chicago. From uh, Chicago, awesome. Uh, do you guys have a question yeah. for Marcella? Yeah, Blake, over here. <laughs> over here in front of the camera seat. There you go, go ahead. Why did you want to prevent golden mussels from killing other fish and mammals? The question is why? Why did you why did you want to stop them? Did you get that? They're wondering why you chose um, the golden mussel and why you want to stop them. Yeah, okay, so this is very, very important because we only want to stop them from reproducing in the invaded areas. So the golden mussels are native from China. So there is a specific river in China that they are natural animals and they reproduce there. The problem with the invasive populations is that they kill other species too. So we don't want them to taking the need, the, taking the space of the native uh, species in the freshwaters of, of South America. And, and as they are very powerful, they reproduce a lot, they grow very fast. They really take, you know, like they take the houses of these other species. So because we want to preserve all the species that we have in our planet, we would like the golden mussels to stay in their own home. And then our native species that cannot compete with them in the, in the wild in South America, they can be preserved too. And we don't like to kill species. We just want to decrease this uh, invasive populations in the invaded areas, so then we can also have the presence of the native populations in the areas. Because the thing is, if we have a very, very big biodiversity in the world, we really like differences, you know, we like very different species everywhere. So as many species as we have, it's better for the planet. Because like different species can live in different temperatures, in different climates. So as homogeneous is an environment, if something changes with the planet, the probability of the biodiversity to die is, is higher because everybody's similar. So if we have a lot of different species, they can, you know, they have different different ways of living, and then we can have like a flourishing world, uh, much bigger than if we just have a lot of invasive populations in, around the world. So that's why. All right, great question, and very good point about biodiversity. Um, we don't really think about it, but the biodiversity of our planet is why we have so many of the things we have. Um, why our environments work and run the way they do. So um, that's a really good point. All right, so uh, we do have time for another question or two. So if anybody does want to ask one, send someone right up to the camera, and then I'll know that there's definitely somebody who's going to ask a question. Oh, I see a hand going in Mrs. Wilson's group, so I'll turn to my phone. What other animals got transported to South America that are causing a problem? Another animal, you mean? Yeah. So yeah, so there is a few animals. There is also a snail, it's a terrestrial snail. 
But it's one thing that is really interesting is that this ballast water, which is this water that comes in the ships, thousands of species every day, and then and then only some species uh, that really get and become very invasive and aggressive. So this is also something else that we want to understand in the genome. If there is something in the genome of the invasive species that are very different from other species that cannot have this power of invasiveness. So there are few, so there is so this is Neo is one species that I know. The more something that is very aggressive as an invasive species are plants. So plants really uh, spread around a lot. All right. So you mentioned ballast water in the tanks. Are there regulations in Brazil uh, now to kind of limit where and and how the tanks can be dumped? Yes, actually, we have like a regulations in South America. So the countries got together to prevent, you know, especially because of this golden muscle issue. So we have a normative, as they call it. It's not a law because it's not only from one country, but it's from like an agreement of countries. It's called Norman 20, which has a lot of regulations to, to the deballast of the ballast water. So one of the, measure, the measurements is to deballast twice the water before entering in the Amazon, close to the Amazonian rivers, because this is a very big issue and we really want to prevent the deballast of ballast water close to the Amazonian rivers. So this is one thing that we are really doing. There is also a lot of like different filters for the ballast water that people are implementing. So engineers are developing filters, so then they filter all these animals that eventually are in the ballast water of ships that coming from other countries. So, but the, really the law establishes that Amazon they should be ballast before going there twice, and then they cannot develop the water exactly there when they are in Amazon. And All right. So I saw some hands with Mrs. West group. Do you guys have another question? I see some hands. Your mic's on. Hey, Chaya, ask your question. Oh, okay. This is Malcolm. Go ahead, Malcolm. What? How are you going to try and stop them from invading here and and all over the world? How are you going to get enough people to try and stop them from invading everywhere since they're spread since they they're spreading out? Yeah, this is a very important question. That's why we are working. So we are trying to do, you know, things as, as soon as possible. So there are a few things, which is first the laws that regulate the ships going around. So we are trying to prevent them to taking the golden muscle there. And we are try we are really, really trying to prevent them to get to the Amazon. If it doesn't get to the Amazon, the probability to getting upper north, south, North America is, is lower. So that's why. So we are doing the genome. We are studying biotechnology the invasive populations, we are taking measurements, uh, uh, taking in account loss of the sheep, so that's all the things that we are trying to do to prevent it. All right, yes, that would be an absolute disaster if they did reach the Amazon, so uh, definitely hope that, that you do find some success. And I think I see someone, one more in Mrs. Webb's class, can finish off the Q&A. Right. So, why are the um, mussels so poisonous to fish, and if they're poisonous, why don't the fish stop eating them? Yeah, I think it's more like I think it's more like a, uh, the golden mussel is like a big mac for the fish. It's not that it's a poison; it's like they like it so much that they eat it a lot of them. End up like dying of indigestion, you know. So the fish just eat, eat, eat them, and this is like an issue because you know the species they are like top in the in the web of life sorry sometimes my english is not that good so the, if the if the fishes have this new resource which is the golden muscle they can also have more more baby fish right so they do this a lot because they have this food so we see an increase in the fish populations in this lake and it, it's, it's really like if it was like the lake weeks which are the golden there before and then the fishes are really eating them and really you know getting sick because they, they eat too much it's more like this 
eating because they like them, you know, and they are there. So it's really hard. I like that comparison. They're like a Big Mac. They're just so tasty for the fish. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for taking the time uh, to share your story and, and, and what you're researching. You know, invasive species is a very uh, well-studied topic in grade schools. It's very important in the curriculum in Canada and the U.S. So thank you for, for hanging out and telling us a little bit about what's happening in Brazil and South America. Thank you guys so much for inviting me. If you have any other questions, you can always uh, write me. So Joe has my email. You can ask me anything. I'll be available. Thank you guys a lot. All right. I'm going to turn the microphones on so the classes can say oh, and uh, thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much.